The question has been asked, what I bring with me on long distance trips. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of just about everything I bring. First off is sleeping. You know, what I sleep in, the equipment I use, stuff like that. A lot of it depends on weather. If it's going to be warm to you know hot, I don't need my big 20 degree blanket, whatever. So I just have a simple down blanket. It's pretty much a throw. There's nothing special about it. It's good for, you know, about 50 degrees, somewhere around there, a little bit warmer. If you mix that with uh, your clothing, you can take it down a little bit lower. But it's just a simple blanket, nothing major to it. It's just, it's just good to have. Packs down small because it is down. So, and it's done me pretty good. This one in particular is just some off-brand Amazon find. It was like 50 bucks. So, it's not too bad. Now, if it's going to be colder, and especially if I have the wife with me, I have my Enlightened Equipment Accomplished Quilt. Now, with the quilt, it's nice because, once again, it's not a full sleeping bag. But this one is made for two people. And... The underneath side, you have a foot box in here. So you put your feet in there, and then you just kind of pull it up around you when you're laying down. If these two parts can snap together, kind of keep it around you. I don't like it like that. It's just, you know, might be a little hard to see. But it just goes around your neck and it'll uh, keep it in there like that. And I'm not a big fan of things around my neck. So, it does pretty good. It's, this one's rated down to 20 degrees. You can get them made however you want. Different color combinations. It's a little pricey and took a little bit longer to have made, but it's really not too bad. Bad thing about a quilt is there's no hood like you would with a mummy bag. So sleeping at night, obviously, I just use a simple beanie. If it's cold, then I have a buff that I can sleep in. Nothing crazy there. Some uh, silk glove liners. They're nice to sleep in. They're not super bulky or anything by any means. And then I bought this back when I was snowboarding. But it's essentially a kind of like a buff, but it's cut out. And then it has fleece on the inside. I don't know if you can really see that. So it's nice and soft and it's warm. This is great to sleep in. It's also great to wear around your mouth and your neck if it's real cold. So, I haven't seen any quite like this since I got it, but if you can find it, it's great to have. Alright, so what do I sleep in? I got two main options that I normally use. One is my Grand Trunk Skeeter Beater Hammock. It has, it's a simple uh, gathered in hammock and it has a bug net that's attached to it. It's pretty good, pretty light, easy to set up and it's definitely nice to sleep off the ground. Uh, then when it's cold, I don't have a under quilt yet. So, two of my options is I have a Climate Static V insulated sleeping pad. You know, just blow it up, throw it on the bottom, and it works pretty good. It's kind of hard to keep it in place, but overall it works. Another thing that's easy to do is 
You just got this cheap uh, reflectance type material. It's the sun shades, sun visors that you can buy for your vehicle for like three bucks. Buy one of these, you know, shiny side out, lay on it, and it reflects your heat back to you. Helps keep you warm. The good thing about this one is it's cheap, it's light, and if you tear it, whatever, no big deal. You just go buy new one. The good thing about the Static V is if you're in a place where you don't have trees, you can still easily rig up something with the hammock and sleep on the ground. Uh, with the hammock, I usually carry a tarp, just a simple, I think it's 10 by 10. This one's made by Bare Butt. You know, it's light. It works great. It got stuck in the rain underneath it. Pour it rain all night. I stay dry. No problems. If uh, if need be, you can just set up your tarp as you know a simple pitch. Throw down your hammock, and then uh, lay underneath. Trekking poles or sticks. Set them up. Set your hand. Tie uh, your tarp up. Throw this down so you pull on this. And the uh, air mattress would definitely work. Now, if I know for a fact where I'm going is not going to have trees or I'm not going to be able to hammock camp, then I have a couple different options that I bring. One is my Big Agnes Copper Spur 2. Nice tent. It's lightweight. It's easy to set up. The only downside is is it's only a two-man tent, which if anybody knows anything about tents, it's not really a two-man tent. It's like one and a half. So me and the wife, I mean, we use it when we go backpacking because of the lightweight if we're not using the, the hammock. But yeah, it's not the most room in the world. If you're going for a little bit longer, of course on a bike, weight is not so much an issue, then I just have a cheap three-person dome tent. It's big enough for me and her with space. It was like 30 bucks, you know, no big deal. I hate the sleeves, I hate a lot of things about it, but it's cheap, it works, and it's easy to set up. And Honestly, this three-man tent doesn't take up too much more room than the two-man tent. So it works out. And that is it for how I sleep. Alright, next up is my fire making. There's a couple different methods you can use or I can use. One is toilet paper roll, which you know, if you toilet paper stuff with dryer line. Light it up, it goes. Not too bad. One of the one of the methods I like to use is take some candle wax and these little makeup removers, melt down the candle wax and dip a disc into the melted wax. I need to make some or I'll show you. So you just end up covering these little makeup remover things with wax and by four pack of candles at Dollar Tree, you know, a dollar store, these are like 80, see here, an 80 count for like a dollar. But once it's covered in wax, all you have to do is tear it to reveal some fresh cotton and then you light the edges on fire. And it will let this cotton uh, disc burn for, you know, four or five minutes. It actually burns for a pretty long time. Comes in nice and handy. Now, another method is got some oil, preferably some uh, extra virgin olive oil, so you can use it while you're cooking. You know, dump that on the outside of one of these desks or cotton balls. You know, pull it apart, light it on fire. Same concept. Uh, of course, you gotta have lighters. Of course. I don't do a whole lot of redundancy with stuff, but 
I don't do a whole lot of redundancy on stuff, but lighters, I usually carry at least one, if not two, and then I carry a ferrocene rod and striker, which this works wet or dry. The lighters are great. Don't work, you know. Don't do anything harder than what you have to. But if these get wet or you run out of fuel, they don't work. And I have this little bellow. I mean, it's really nothing more fancy than a straw almost. But this lets you get in there and blow air exactly where you want it to help get the coals hot and kick it back up. It's a. Uh, you know, it's not something I bring all the time, but it seems like when I don't bring it, it would be nice to have. Now, another thing that I do bring that is kind of sanitary and it's kind of first aid is just hand sanitizer. This is some cheap stuff. But if it's high in alcohol, which most are, it will burn. It will burn pretty good. So, I've used hand sanitizers to start a fire before. Whatever you have to do to work, right? Because when you're cold, you don't care how the fire gets started as long as the fire gets started. Old Altoid boxes are great to help keep things organized. In this one I have my fire starter, and my lighter, and my ferrocene rod. This one I have some band-aids and some alcohol pads. And this one I have some tea tea bags. It just it's nice to have everything kind of organized and whatnot. You just throw them all in there, throw them in another bag and it's all stay together. And even rubber band them together whatnot. usually bring a reflective emergency blanket it's always just nice to have just in case health and hygiene I just have a little mesh bag and keep everything in normally keep it simple I have a little thing of pills Advil you know, I got a little spray thing of uh, hand sanitizer, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Tums, because life sucks. I mean, I have heartburn, you know, just a little spray bottle of bug spray. Of course, these are more expensive than a big bottle, but they also take up less room. Simple toothbrush, folds over. Toothpaste, obviously. Not pictured as deodorant because you know who wants to stink. And then I have two different types of water purifiers. This one is UV activated. You turn it on. Uh, stir pin. You turn it on. You dip it down in water. Usually I have a clear Nalgene, stir it around, and it's supposed to kill all the bugs, all the baddies, charges with a UV or USB, and uh, it lasts for quite a long, long time. So it's definitely nice to have. don't want to go that route, I have kind of like a life straw type deal. And then they make the sawyer squeeze and also like to carry biodegradable camp soap. Use it to clean dishes, use it to clean clothes, use it to wash your hair, you can use it for a little bit of everything. Comes in handy, it's biodegradable, it's not gonna hurt any of your uh, nature stuff out there. Now my cooking, I have jet boil. It's nice, everything's packed inside. I made an extra little windscreen thing here out of just some stuff from Lowe's. And 
and this is the one with the coffee press too. But, of course this goes on top of your fuel. This pops right on in. And then you can put like a pot or a pan. Uh, last time I really used this, it was with a little cast iron frying pan that we brought along. Comes in handy. It's not the best solution for trying to cook with a with a frying pan, but it works pretty good. And the way I have everything set up is it all fits right back in to uh, the cup itself. The coffee strainer, your stands, your burner. Fuel goes on top of that. This slides right on in. Bing bing. And there you go. It also has a little cup of its own with a diamond. But it all fits together. As far as eating goes, I have these, this little collapsible bowl. A little collapsible mug. You know, they can handle the hot stuff and cold stuff and they close down. I bought these online for cheaper than what you'll see at REI and stuff. Some off brand, but they're pretty good. And of course, they close back on each other. And with these two systems, I don't really feel a need to bring a plate, especially if I'm just cooking with the jet boil. Everything's kind of probably better off eating out of a bowl anyway. Now, as far as silverware, I did find this. It's just a little neoprene pouch, has chopsticks, and a spoon and a fork. I thought there was a knife. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. It works pretty good. Um, they're all just cheap press stuff. You probably buy something just as good at a dollar store. Now, I normally bring this knife with me. It is a Gerber knife. Part of the Bear Grill series, which whatever the knife is okay I keep it decently sharp I have paracord wrap around it with a little extra I mean it does all right probably want it want to be something I want to hold my life to but it does okay for what I need it to then usually I have a multi-tool with me of some sort also in personal care keep some floss comes in handy other than getting crap out of your teeth. Usually I uh, have some extra paracord with me. Nothing crazy. But if I have to set up uh, the hammock on the ground, I need something to help tie up the stick or trekking pole or whatever. Of course, as far as lights go, I just carry a simple headlight. Nothing fancy there. I carry you know, an excess extra flashlight just to make sure. And one of my crazy gimmicks that I like is my Christmas lights. Just a little strand of Christmas lights. And then this houses the batteries, which I do believe there's no batteries in here. Huh. Mm -hmm. So it takes three triple A's and plug it in, turn them on, you just get a nice wonderful glow and it's pretty nice I mean it puts out enough light that you can rummage around your tent or a hammock without needing an extra uh, without needing an extra flashlight If you go walking at night to go exploring, it makes it easier to come back to your tent 
Be like, oh, there I am, you know, the one with the Christmas lights in it. And they weren't expensive, and they're just kind of neat. It's kind of one of the things I get asked about the most when I'm out. Other people see me. So you have a high, low, and a couple different flashy modes. But, I mean, yeah, I, I bring them with me even when I'm backpacking. Just kind of, kind of fun to have. Back to personal hygiene. Baby wipes. Always nice to have baby wipes. Hot, sweaty, clean yourself off. And they're cheap. They're like a dollar or something for a big 80 count. They're like less than less than five bucks definitely. Always get the fragrance free. I got my chair. This is the Moon Lance. It's the knockoff to uh A light, monarch, or all that. I do have the more expensive versions, but the knockoffs actually have a better storage bag, which makes it easier to uh, put the chair back in, especially if it's cold and your hands don't want to work properly. So it's pretty simple and self-explanatory how to put it together. So there you have it, real time, like a minute or two. You got yourself a nice little chair. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So something worth the forty bucks. 50 bucks, whatever it is. Hard day riding. Relax by the fire in your little chair. Nice to have. It is a waterproof pouch. Put your cell phone in there. Give it a couple wraps, close it up. Just save my butt at least once when I was trying to use the GPS for navigation and it was downpour. Of course, my cell phone is not waterproof. These little things, you know, just a blow up air pillow, neck pillow. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. It does have a nice coating on it. But it doesn't take up a lot of room. And it's sleeping in, I like having it when I'm sleeping in the hammock. Kind of helps support your neck. And I think this is Amazon for like a dollar or something for two of them. So, can't complain. I also have the X Pillow, which I, I'm not a fan of this one, but it does pack down really small. I just I don't find it to be very comfortable. Also, bring extra batteries, of course. These are cheap Dollar Tree batteries, and my fan. Now, there's a trick with this thing. Here's one of my tips for hot weather camping. Bring a fan. This is some cheap Walmart fan. There's nothing major to it, but it runs off a of USB. Good to have, good to know. So, this is one of those USB batteries, backup batteries for cell phones. All you gotta do is plug the fan into here and the fan works. Now this little battery backup thing here will last all night long. I've had this fan running about eight hours off of this battery pack. And riding the bike, I have multiple USBs, chargers, or riding the bike, I have multiple USB power ports, so I can charge this throughout the day. So charge it during the day, use it all night, 
can stay nice and comfy in the tent. Uh, one last thing uh, I'll bring would just be a small microfiber towel. Absorbs water good, wring it out, dries pretty quickly, packs them all. It's not the most luxurious thing in the world, but it works. And that is what I bring with me on a motorcycle adventure. And most of the time, that's stuff I bring with me when I'm backpacking, too. There's only a few things that are different between backpacking and motorcycle camping, but for the most part, what I use for the one, I can use for the other. Uh, the only real difference when I have the wife with me is another air pad and another chair. Of course, some of her you know, personal items. Clothing is a whole different story, and a big thing with that is don't pack cotton. And I tend to do a lot of micro, or uh, like the Under Armour stuff, and you know, athletic shorts, stuff that you can wash out and sing, wring out, let it dry during the overnight or during the day, and it'll be good to go. But that is what I bring on my long distance motorcycle trips. Thanks for watching.